morning, and welcome to Stony Brook University's 63rd Commencement Ceremony. present the class of 2023. University's Grand Marshal, President of the University Senate, Richard Larson, who proceeds in with our university's mascot, Wolfie. And they are welcomed by our university faculty. Larson carries the university's ceremonial mace, which serves as a symbol of scholarship and integrity and represents the historic significance of today's ceremony. This newly designed mace was generously gifted to the university by the Alumni Association. First, we are welcoming graduates from the School of Professional Development. Entering next, we have our graduates from the School of Health Professions. Communication and journal. 
Capitalism.
this. Sorry, guys. Can I grab my water? <laughs>
Good morning. Candidates, please rise if you are able. Join us in welcoming today's platform party, led by Stony Brook University's faculty, distinguished members of our senior leadership and staff, student government, our elected officials, special guests, SUNY trustee Merrill Tisch, and U.S. Senator Chuck Schumer, and our university president, Mari McInnes. We now welcome University Senate President and today's Grand Marshal, Richard Larson. <laughs> Good morning. I am honored as Stony Brook University President, Senate President to formally open today's ceremony. Here now, in the presence of the candidates for academic recognition, faculty, administration, alumni, honored guests, and friends of the State University of New York at Stony Brook, our commencement ceremony is hereby convened. Please rise as you are able for the singing of our national anthem, performed today by Michaela Larson, who is graduating with a Master's in, of Music and Vocal Performance. She is joined today by the spirit of Stony Brook. Oh, 
Please be seated. It is a pleasure to welcome the university's special guests who have joined us today. University, uh, United States Senate Majority Leader Charles Schumer. Check it. <laughs> State University of New York Trustee Chairman Merrill Tisch. New York State Senator Anthony Palumbo. New York State Assembly members Ed Flood and Jody Giglio. <laughs> Suffolk County legislators Samuel Gonzalez, Herr Karahan, and Jason Rischberg. <laughs> we are also honored to have with us members of the Stony Brook Council, Council Chair Kevin Law, <laughs> Port Jeff Village Mayor Margot Garant, Chris Hahn, or the Reverend Michael Smith and Frank Trotta. <laughs> Distinguished members of the President's Cabinet and University Council, and President of the Stony Brook Alumni Association, Ahmed Balazi. <laughs> President of the Graduate Student Organization, Manjat Singh. <laughs> and President of the Undergraduate Student Association, Student Government, Ocean Karim. Undergraduate Student Government Vice President of Student Life, Whittling Jean. <laughs> and of course, today's announcer, Assistant Vice President for Career Development and Experiential Education, Mariana Savoca. <laughs> and now, family and friends, let's give a big cheer for our Stony Brook University Class of 2023. And now, please welcome the president of Stony Brook University, Mari McInnes. Thank you, everyone. Welcome to the 2023 Stony Brook University Commencement Celebration. I want especially to thank university faculty and staff and the parents and friends of our graduates. All of you have played a role in the academic success of this group of scholars. And above all, congratulations to the class of 2023. It is my privilege to introduce someone renowned for his extraordinary service to the state of New York. And although he is a Brooklyn resident, he has been a tireless advocate for Long Island and an extremely close friend of the Stony Brook family. He advocates for all of us each day in Washington and has brought tens of millions of dollars back to Stony Brook University Brookhaven National Lab, and our students. United States Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Thank you. 
Hello, class of 2023. Stony Brook, congratulations. You've made it. Now, to my good friend and chair of SUNY's Board of Trustees, Merrill Tisch, to our great president, Maury McGinnis, the members of the faculty, the administrators, the clerks, all the way down to the people who come here late at night and keep this school clean together. You have made Stony Brook University not only one of the finest institutions of higher learning in New York, but one of the greatest institutions of higher learning in America and the world. Job well done. Let's have a round of applause for them. Now first, I'd say, like to say a word to the parents. I know how you feel. Not long ago, my wife, Iris, and I sat where you are and watched our daughter, Allison, come up on stage and get her diploma. It was one of the proudest moments of our lives. You've been through a lot as parents. Not easy raising kids these days. But now you get to watch all your blood, sweat, and tears pay off as your son or daughter walks onto this stage, gets their diploma, and becomes an adult before your very eyes. Congratulations to the moms and dads. Let's hear it for them. And one other word of thanks, as we're here today having a great time, there are young men and women, many from Long Island, many your age, who are in our armed forces. They're in dangerous places, risking their lives for our freedom. Let's have a round of applause for them as well. Now, to this great class, 2023, SBU. You know, the challenges of the last few years have truly been unique. I'm sure you expected your time in college to bring new experiences, but that probably didn't include a global pandemic. And yet you are here after having earned a degree from a truly outstanding institution of higher learning. You overcame immense obstacles to get here. Nothing, nothing and nobody can ever take that away from you. We have more work to do, but little by little, life's returning to normal. It took a lot of work to reach this point. As majority leader, I worked hard to pass the American Rescue Plan, which put money in the pockets of families and small businesses who were hurt by the pandemic. And across all of the relief bills, I was, to, I was proud to secure over $104 million for Stony Brook, much of which went to students to help you get through during COVID. And one more thing I'm working to achieve, graduates. I'm working with the president and others to get them to cancel a significant portion of student debt, a crushing burden on your shoulders. I'm going to keep fighting till that student debt is gone. Off your backs. So, graduates, we all know this is an era of profound economic and social change. In the old days, when you graduated from college, the odds were pretty high. You'd have the same job in the same field for 40 years. That's not so true anymore. Most of you will have several jobs, many several careers. Along with these economic changes, the internet has put so much information at our fingertips that it's sometimes hard to figure out what's important and to distinguish between what's true and what's not. Too often on the internet, the loudest voices get the most attention. But class of 2023, the good news about our changing world is this. Your generation is better equipped than any other that came before it to adapt to these changes, to overcome the obstacles they present, and to seize the opportunities they afford. Right now, though, sitting in your seats, you may not be sure of what's coming next. With so much of the world changing so fast around you, it may feel sometimes like you're jumping into an abyss. But graduates, the key is not to fear the unknown. Embrace it, relish it, soak up every possibility it has to offer. Cast aside your fears and your doubts. So my advice to the class of 23 is simple. Go for it. Now, how do I know? 
I remember feeling these doubts myself when I was at your age. When I was seated at college graduation many years ago, like you are today, I had just learned that I had won a scholarship to travel all around the world, all expenses paid for a whole year. For me, it was the opportunity of a lifetime. I had never been out of the country before. But graduates, at the same time, I met a girl and I fell in love. Ah! So I had to decide. Do I, go around the, do I go around the world on the all expense paid scholarship for a whole year? Or do I stay home with the girl, my first true love? What would you have done, class of 2023? <laughs> President McGinnis, the class is divided. I stayed home with the girl. Don't clap yet, you romantic over there. The story continues. That summer, she went on a brief vacation, and I went to the airport to meet her on her return. As soon as she got off the plane, I saw by the look on her face, something was the matter. She dumped me by Labor Day. There I was, no scholarship, no trip around the world, no girl. I said to myself, what a loser you are. You're never gonna make anything of yourself. And in fact, I stayed in my house for a few months, moped around, felt sorry for myself. But somehow, I picked myself up, dusted myself off, and moved forward. And a few years later, I found myself seated at graduation once again, this time from law school. But on the way home from graduation, graduates, I broke the news to my parents that I wasn't going to join the fancy law firm like we had planned. I told them politics was my passion. My dream was to run for public office and make the world a better place. My parents were so disappointed, my mother most particularly. You see, I grew up in a working class family that struggled to send their son to college and law school. They wanted the best for me, and the law firm was paying $400 a week more money in those days than my family had ever seen. But my heart wasn't in it. I didn't want to be pushing a pencil for some client that I didn't know and I figured if I met him, I wouldn't like him. My passion was to run for office, do public service. And so that fall, at the age of 23, and against very long odds, I ran for the New York State Assembly and I had three opponents. There was the party machine candidate, there was a neighborhood activist, and then, there was my mother who was telling all her friends not to vote for me. So as she said, I'd get this dumb idea of being a politician out of my big thick head. Well, graduates, a few years earlier, I sure didn't get that girl. But that November, I won the election. So, graduates, on this great day of your achievement, my advice to you, Take the risk. Don't let fear of failing deter you. Don't let those doubts deter you. For those of us who have gotten older and look back on life, one of the more painful moments is what I call the what ifs. You look back and say, what if I'd only done this? What if I'd only gone there? My advice to the class of 2023 is simple. Go for it. You're about to cast off into the unknown. I know sometimes it can seem scary, but you've got great assets. A great education here at Stony Brook, one of the best institutions of higher learning in the world, and families that will always have your back through thick and thin. So garner up your courage, garner up your strength, put aside your doubts, take a chance, and if you do, it is my hope, it is my prayer, and indeed it's my confidence that you will find true success and true joy in life. To this great class of 2023 SBU, congratulations. Good luck. Godspeed and don't forget, go for it. Thank you, Senator Schumer. 
We appreciate all you do for our community. And now, please join me in welcoming our special guest, State University of New York trustee, Chairman Merrill Tisch. So to my right is Kevin Law. Kevin Law is the chair of the Stony Brook Council. I'm the chair of the SUNY Board of Trustees. Seated behind us is President Maury McGinnis. People say, Kevin, Merrill, what do you all do all day? And Kevin and Merrill's response is, we found Maury McGinnis as a gift to you. You are graduating Stony Brook during the greatest moment in its history. When people hear that you graduate from Stony Brook, you can wear that label proudly. So many of you are first generations. So many of you come from stories of struggle. But wherever you go in this world, Maury McGinnis, and Kevin Law are responsible for taking this institution and making it great. And now, from a personal point of view, I am a rabbi's daughter. Six months ago, my father passed away. And it, I don't go to many graduations, but I feel this was a special one because it's a, such a special moment in Stony Brook's history. If my dad were standing beside me, he would give you the priestly benediction. So graduates and your families, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he grant you of his most precious gifts, the gift of life, the gift of health, the gift of happiness, to be celebrated in your world at peace. Bless. Graduates, congratulations on this major achievement. You are about to officially become alumni of Stony Brook University. Now is an incredible time for this institution. So the graduating class of 2023, this is an especially auspicious moment. Stony Brook is now a flagship university in the SUNY system. the number one public university in New York, and the founding institution for the New York Climate Exchange on Governor's Island. We are honored that you have been a part of our legacy, and we are grateful to be a part of yours. Take a moment, look around, absorb this moment. You have arrived at this day because of your hard work and because of all of those who have supported you along the way. So class of 2023, I ask that you stand and join me in a round of applause for all of the meaningful people in your lives who have assisted you on your journey. And now, faculty, staff, friends and family, let's give a big cheer for the 2023 graduates of Stony Brook University.
This year, over one third of our graduates are the first in their families to attend college. These students are making a significant step not only towards their own future, but the future of their families and their communities. And I think that deserves a round of applause as well. <laughs> Futures. That's really what a commencement ceremony is about. A moment to reflect as you move from one phase of your life to another. At moments like this, these points of transition from one chapter to the next, time tends to do funny things. It both speeds up and slows down simultaneously. It's not surprising that I've heard so many of you say in the past couple of weeks, it feels like I just started yesterday, time has passed too quickly. And yet what feels like a short matter of time to you, while you've been here, you have done so much. In addition to your own growth as a student, a scholar, and a researcher, you have left an indelible mark on Stony Brook. And no matter where your pathway leads, I know you will be taking the spirit of Stony Brook with you. Because you have demonstrated that to be a sea wolf is to care for your communities. Graduates, you have already shown that the work we do right here, right now, can truly alter destinies and change lives. As just one example, graduate Brittany Michelogere sought to make a difference as she realized there were those struggling with food insecurity. <laughs> Brittany began volunteering at the food pantry and later became an undergraduate coordinator managing the weekly donation and distribution of over 1,300 fresh food items. Or take Patrick Abel, one of our graduating student athletes who in addition to breaking a 30-year-old record in the 100-meter dash, was determined to act to support student mental health. In addition to co-leading a black and Latino men's health and wellness program to bring men of Stony Brook together, offering them needed resources and a source of support, he led the redesign of the Club Hub game room to provide a place where sea wolves could hang out, relax, unwind, and de-stress with their friends. Also graduating today is Dea Cherie Baskarun, who served on the board of Stony Brook's chapter of Global Medical Brigades, an international movement of students, community workers, and medical professionals implementing sustainable health systems in remote, rural, and under-resourced communities abroad. This past summer, she and 12 other volunteers traveled to Honduras to help doctors perform examinations and give public health presentations in Spanish. And she was a great student in my class. The list goes on. Graduates who led our student blood drive committee, which partnered with the New York Blood Center and this year celebrated more than 10 thousand lives saved. <laughs> Senior peer educators for the Center of Outreach and Prevention who taught sea wolves about and provided critical resources on preventing suicide and alcohol abuse. Graduates in the Middle Eastern Student Association and the Turkish American Student Association who raised thousands of dollars for Save the Children and UN Crisis Relief to support earthquake relief in Turkey and Syria. And 
And that is just a small snapshot of the kind of collaborative, creative, and service-driven projects that our graduates have taken on. You might ask, how did they do it? How did they excel academically, build bridges across Long Island and the world, push themselves, maintain friendships, cultivate interests, get through finals, and graduate? In addition to giving so much back to society. Each of you, members of the class of 2023, has your own unique story to tell about your past few years at Stony Brook your own challenges and successes, but you did it. You did it because you're sea wolves and because you're the class of 2023. At every turn, you have used the power of education to give back to your community, to create opportunity, and to leave a legacy of which we can be proud. So class of 2023, get ready for this next exciting chapter in your lives. There will inevitably be moments of self-doubt, moments of incredible joy, and moments of challenges, moments of success, moments where you may need to rethink your path forward. Moments where you will find your people, a network, a friend group, a community that you believe in and want to fight for. And maybe there will be a moment years from now where you've made a groundbreaking discovery or accepted your dream job or achieved something that from where you sit right now might seem impossible. And you'll think back to this very day, standing here with your peers at Stony Brook on the precipice of your future, grateful for those people and those experiences that set you on this pathway to that future. Be grateful for all of these moments, Sea Wolves, because taken together with all their obstacles and victories, lessons and questions, they make a life well lived. And as you join the more than 200,000 alumni across the globe, we want you to stay connected with Stony Brook, engage with our passionate community, and consider this university a second home to celebrate all you will achieve. We always say that once a sea wolf always a sea wolf. And we want to learn from you <laughs> and grow with you through all the extraordinary turns your ambitions will take. I speak for all the leaders, faculty, and staff at Stony Brook when I say that we are proud of you. But perhaps most pointedly, we are grateful for the time, the energy, the work, and the inspiration that you have brought to this institution and that you will continue to bring to the world. We cannot wait to see the impact you will make. Congratulations, class of 2023. Please now welcome Executive Vice President and Provost, Carl Lejue. I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge our faculty and thank them for being here to celebrate this enormous milestone for our students. Our faculty are a central part of our students' journey as scholars. Rarely, if ever, do we achieve success working in isolation. Just like families, friends, and staff invest in our students' success, particularly do our faculty. 
They represent some of the best work and the most brilliant minds their disciplines have to offer. Their work has the potential to change lives, improve societies, and impact the world. And here at Stony Brook, their work has done that. They have chosen to work at a university so they can share this knowledge with students to educate and mentor the next generation of innovators, leaders, scholars, professionals, and caring citizens. Graduates, as you embark on your next step, know that here at Stony Brook, we are always cheering you on. Don't hesitate to reach out to that favorite mentor of yours whenever you need advice or want to be happy about your accomplishments. Faculty and staff love to hear from students after they graduate. I've kept in touch with many of my students I've advised and who've worked with me in my research years after they've graduated. And I'm always thrilled to hear from them and really moved by what they've accomplished. I know our faculty feel the same. So here are some faculty reflections on what collaborating with you has meant to them. Congratulations to the class of 2023. We are all so proud of you. My advice for graduating students is one word, yes. Say yes to new experiences. Say yes when you're on the job to a committee or when you're in graduate school and they want someone to participate in something unique. Say yes. Don't be afraid to take that crappy job while you're waiting for the right job. If you need to volunteer on your time off, do that. Make sure that everything you do either makes you happy or advances your career. Mind that creativity that has always been a part of their education and to think more about their future drawing from that and the skills that they learn getting their degree. That's what's going to create new job prospects and a life that brings their work and their personality together. But I want you to also think about how you can take this wonderful education you received at Stony Brook and do some good in the world, do some good for others. I think you'll find as your life goes on that some of the greatest joy you'll experience is from doing good for others. You all work so hard to get to this point. You've overcome so much, you've sacrificed. And when you finally get here, the first thing you start doing is worrying about the next step. So my advice would be to just enjoy where you're at, work hard, and you'll find out that good things are gonna happen. My favorite Stony Brook traditions are those that involve celebrating the accomplishments of the students. To see their faces light up for all they've done, to see their parents and family members so proud of all they've achieved. If I have any advice for graduating students, it's that the bonds you have now will endure for the rest of your life. So water them like you would any other plant. When you're an Earth, every day, you're gonna have the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of others, and that is your superpower. Let your passion be your guide. You cannot predict the future, and if you follow your dreams, you will find happiness. So the funniest thing that a student did this year was I was out in the store and I was in my, you know, casual attire and their jaw dropped when they saw me and they said, you are human. During one of the simulations, we had a simulated code experience where the student actually jumped on top of the patient, straddled them and performed CPR. And that's not the typical way that we teach them to do CPR. My favorite memory goes to the big bowl of chocolates that I keep on my desk. And I have a steady stream of stressed students and faculty too um, who make their way to my office and grab a piece or three or four. So I started to feel guilty that I was contributing to extra pounds and sugar highs all over campus. So I got rid of the chocolates and I replaced it with a bowl of clementines. Nothing. They rotted. We all started in this really boisterous, you know, fun atmosphere in Javits 100 with 570 students and a balcony, and everybody was engaged. We were there. And I'm really proud of the students for weathering the storm through all of the pandemic and coming out um, engaged still in their education because you're all here today. So congratulations, class of 2023. 
My advice to graduating students is be brave and be fearless. The world needs you now more than ever. You can be and you can do anything. After all, you're a Seawolf. We now invite undergraduate student government vice president of student life, Whittaline Jean, for a special presentation from the class of 2023. Good morning, President McInnes, esteemed platform members, faculty, parents, family, friends, and fellow graduates. Congratulations, class of 2023. We did it. My name is Whittaline Jean. I am the USG Vice President of Student Life. I am excited to present this year's class legacy gift, a tradition established by the Office of the Dean of Students and USG in 2005. The class legacy gift allows students an opportunity to show their pride and open more doors for Seawolves following in their footsteps. Over the years, graduating Seawolves have given thousands of dollars to fund scholarships, student life, research, their school, college, or team, whatever matters most to them at Stony Brook. As class legacy donors, we are not only leaving our mark here at Stony Brook, but we are also demonstrating our citizenship to the world and taking a first step in becoming active, loyal alumni. And I'm so proud and excited to report that, so far, nearly 600 of us have donated to our class legacy, almost doubling the number from last year, and we've already raised $22,300, thanks in part to matching dollars from the Stony Brook Alumni Association. But it's not too late, classmates of 23, to visit classlegacy.stonybrook.edu and make your mark. I would like to take a moment to recognize all of our class legacy donors. So if you are wearing a red and black generosity cord, please stand. <laughs> Dr. McKinnis, as the VP of Student Life, I am thrilled to present you with this check to the Stony Brook Foundation. We are proud this, we hope this gift of 23 gift will leave a living legacy to the university and community. To my fellow graduates, thank you for contributing and I look forward to seeing you at homecoming in the fall. Please be seated. And now, please welcome Vice President for Student Affairs, Rick Gateau. Good afternoon, class of 2023. I am honored to introduce our student speaker, Vanita Abraham. I have had the pleasure of knowing Venita for the last four years, first meeting her as a student in my University Scholars 102 class, and then seeing her grow and develop into an outstanding student leader at Stony Brook. Venita is graduating today with her Bachelor of Arts in Psychology, along with a minor in Creative Writing. A native of Herrick's Long Island, Venita has been highly engaged on campus participating on the Janoon Bollywood dance team and singing in the Stony Brook Hospital Choir. Vanita also served as president of the Psychi Psychology Honor Society, supported her peers as a resident assistant, and gained valuable experience as a research assistant in the psychology department and as an intern in the Career Center. After graduation, Vanita plans to continue her studies right here at Stony Brook, pursuing a master's degree in human resource management. Vanita, we are so proud of you and all that you have accomplished during your time as a Seawolf. Please help me welcome Vanita Abraham.
Blank canvases are my favorite. Much like the speech, which was written under the pretenses of a blank Google Doc and minimal instructions. I used to be scared of painting outside the lines with no rules. Now, I love it. Of course, I can't say I walked into Stony Brook in August of 2019 with a completely blank canvas. There were some splotches on it, stories I had heard from those who came before, rumors of things we should look forward to or dread. And those big things were always there. Commencement, this day, these caps and gowns, these were things to look forward to. Some of us have planned these outfits and these hairstyles and these graduation Instagram captions for years now. The big things were always there. Freshman orientation, Roth Regatta, Brookfest, Wolfie Land. We knew about those. We saw those coming. Like watching an artist paint strokes across a bumpy, imperfect canvas, we saw it unfolding in front of our eyes. The failed tests, the successful projects, the good roommates, and the bad ones, the quick drives, the long commutes in traffic. We were ready. We've been ready. But art, much like college, never happens as planned. And if I've learned anything these past few years, it's that it's not about those big moments anyway. It's about everything that happens in between them. If you've ever spent enough time around me, you know I always have a camera in my hand, ready to take some Polaroid shots or record a video. But you also know that it's hardly ever I do that for the big moments. All those big events that have happened in these past few years, I barely have a single picture documenting those. Instead, I like to capture the little moments. The smiles shared between two unknowing people. The sky in between day and night. The faces people make right between fits of laughter. The in-betweens. That's what I love to capture. Because it's not always just about the good or the bad, but about the okay roommates who say good morning and good night and make sure you get home safe, but they don't pry about your secrets. It's about the music you play on those long commutes with the windows open and head peeking out of the roof. It's about those late night Monopoly games where it all began once upon a time. It's about movie nights and not just the movie itself, but that one person who asks way too many questions throughout. It's about sharing confessions in whispers at 3 a.m. that we probably should not have shared instead of sleeping or doing homework. It's about those dance practices that run for more hours than you can count. It's about bringing someone food when they're sick and can't walk to the dining hall. It's about walking someone to class just to make sure they go. Drops of paint, splotches of paint. And sometimes you accidentally spill a whole bucket of paint. Sometimes the world shuts down on a random afternoon in March and sometimes you still remember how it feels to say goodbye to your best friends. But you also remember seeing them again months later. You remember hugging them like you won't ever let go, and you remember when people always told you that you learned to appreciate things when you miss them. So we made up for it, big time. We thought this paint spill would ruin our masterpiece until we stepped closer and noticed how beautiful it was when the paint cracked and created beautiful little designs, like a mosaic of memories. So now, we remember heartbreak, but differently. We remember the people that brought us ice cream and sat with us in the common room when we cried through it. So now, we remember failures, but differently. We remember the people that wouldn't let us give up on ourselves and cheered us on when we did better next time. There was always a next time. So now, we remember making tough decisions but differently. We remember the people that held our hands through tough phone calls and even tougher phone hangups. People at graduations like to say, look around, look at all the familiar faces of people you remember from freshman year, now sitting beside you all together again. But I'm sorry to tell them, I can't. I don't recognize any of these people. But that's okay. 
Most of us are walking out of college as completely different people than the ones we were when we came in. We've all seen a lot. And while these past few years flew by, time felt long enough to change absolutely everything. And it did. We have all seen too much, felt too much, said too much, did too much, to be the same people we used to be. We're older now, different now, more ourselves now than we have ever been. And that's kind of beautiful. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be proud of all the big moments. You should be. The degree that you earned, the classes that you passed, the hours that you crammed into the library, the summers you spent working, be proud of those. Those will never stop being important. But don't forget everything in between. Those pain cracks are what made you the person you saw in the mirror this morning as you got ready for this day. A different person that you saw there when you got ready for your first day at Stony Brook. And as weird as it sounds, that person years ago is not the person that gets to see the future. You are. This version of you, right here, will get to experience so many things. Five minutes from now, five years from now. You are the people that get to see all of that, do all of that. Whether it's more school, or a job, or a nice long, well-deserved vacation, you will be lucky enough to experience every second. So take advantage of that. Go see the world and everything it has to offer. Go see new people or catch up with old ones. Most importantly, write down or take pictures of all the little things so that when you finally meet that version of yourself years from now, you can sit down and tell them all about it. I know they'll want to hear it. I know I would. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Thank you for making all the little moments count. Thank you, Vanita. Now, please welcome your Alumni Association President, Ahmed Balazi. And speaking of mic drop moments, Vanita, that was amazing. Thank you, that was a great speech. And I would pay money to watch that video over again. Seawolves, class of 2023, I am honored to welcome you to the Stony Brook Alumni Association. You are now a member of a community of more than 212,000 alumni spanning the globe. When I was an undergrad in the before times, I saw so many alumni come back to give talks, offer mentorship, make career connections, and support my peers and me in meaningful ways. So many of those alumni are around us today. On this stage, Carol Gomes, Kevin Law, they're EMTs, they're fire marshals, they're police officers, they're physicians, they're teachers, they're scientists. And thanks to the generosity of those alum, that culture, that Seawolf culture, inspired me and many others to pay it forward and to 
do the same for the students who follow us. Think about it, it's a profound thing that we all come from different places. We all live different experiences. We all go on to do different things. Some of you will climb mountains, literally. Some of you will cure diseases, develop technologies, become leaders and make the world a better place in big or small ways. But regardless of where you came from or where you go, because of where you are right now, as a graduate of Stony Brook University, we will always share a common identity. And that identity is why 212,000 of your fellow alumni are cheering you on. It's also why so many of us stay connected. In fact, this year, I got to see Stony Brook University, my SVU, your SVU, be selected as the anchor institution for the Global Climate Solutions Center on Governor's Island. Yeah. I feel so proud knowing that my alma mater continues to trailblaze in such an inspiring way and towards such an important goal for all of humanity. I'm also grateful that I and many other alumni have been able to support and can still support this important cause. And I can't wait for you to have those experiences. I can't wait, speaking of experiences, to see you at homecoming, October 19th through 22nd. There are many days of homecoming. 21st is the special one, right here. No pressure, maybe a little bit of pressure. Um, okay, a healthy amount of pressure. Because I know if you can make it, it's gonna be amazing. And I can't wait to see you at that or at the hundreds of other events that happen on campus, in your area, or even on Zoom. Because even though today is your graduation day, these past four years, or more for some of us, have only been just the beginning of a lifelong relationship with Stony Brook. Whether it's exclusive benefits, career services, student mentorship, networking, and of course, lifelong connections, Stony Brook is here for you. You are a sea wolf for life. I wish you the very best. And as was with your earning your well-deserved degree today, I hope your dreams continue to come true. Thank you and congratulations. And one more thing, if you'll indulge me, I would love to share a 4,000-ish person selfie with your fellow alum. So if you could hold up your pennant and we'll do a selfie, a landscape selfie, because this is beautiful. Thank you, I know they'll be excited to see that. And next, please stay tuned for another feature of our shared history, our alma mater, performed by the Stony Brook vocalists. We now invite Celia Marshak, Dean of the Graduate School, to come forward to begin the formal presentation of candidates. As Dean of Stony Brook University's Graduate School, 
I am honored to recognize the accomplishments of doctoral candidates who have earned PhDs. Earlier this week, we hooded 145 candidates at our doctoral graduation and hooding ceremony. Today, we celebrate their many years of research and scholarship. Will the doctoral candidates joining us today please rise? <laughs> candidates, please be seated. It is also my honor today to recognize the graduates who have earned a master's. The master's is an advanced degree signifying the acquisition of specialized theoretical and practical knowledge. Master's graduates must demonstrate advanced analytical skills, complex problem solving, critical evaluation, and independent scholarship appropriate to their chosen fields. Will the candidates for the master's degrees please rise? Candidates, please be seated. President McGinnis, it is my honor to acknowledge the accomplishments of these candidates. Congratulations. And now we welcome back Provost Lejue to present today's honors candidates. President McGinnis. I am honored to present to you our undergraduate honors candidates who are graduating today with distinction. Attainment of a degree with distinction is indicated on each of these students' diplomas and on their permanent academic record. Will candidates graduating with the distinction of cum laude with honors, magna cum laude with high honors, and summa cum laude with highest honors, please stand. <laughs> President McGinnis, it is with great pride that I present to you this year's honors candidates. Candidates, you may be seated. And we now call our university deans forward to present their candidates. First, we welcome the Dean of the School of Nursing, Patricia Bruckenthal. Good afternoon. On behalf of the faculty, the staff, and the leadership of the School of Nursing, it is my honor to congratulate all of you on this special day. You are members of the largest single group of healthcare providers in the nation. Your practice is critical to link, to promote and restore the health of individuals, families, and communities. Graduates of the School of Nursing use science, humanism, and ethics to practice the healing arts of nursing. Will the candidates for Bachelor of Science and Masters of Science degrees and the Advanced Certificate Program and the Doctors of Nursing practice in the School of Nursing please stand? <laughs> President McGinnis, it is with great pleasure that I present to you this year's School of Nursing candidates. <laughs> candidates, please be seated. And now, welcome Dean of the School of Social Welfare, Sherry Miller. Good afternoon. On behalf of the faculty, staff, administration, and alumni of the School of Social Welfare, it is my honor to offer congratulations to all of our graduates. The world couldn't possibly need more than it does now, you and your collective commitment to humanity, justice, equity, 
and the kind of transformational change that will make this world a better place. As a now and forever member of the School of Social Welfare community, we can't wait to see what comes next for you as your professional paths unfold. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science and Master of Social Work and Doctor of Philosophy degrees in the School of Social Welfare please stand? <laughs> President McGinnis, with great pleasure, I present to you this year's School of Social Welfare candidates. Candidates, please be seated. Next, we welcome from the School of Health Professions, Dean Stacy Jaffe Gropak. Congratulations to all the graduates of 2023. On behalf of the faculty and staff of the School of Health Professions, we offer our congratulations to our graduates. We are grateful for the future work you will do in preventing illness, promoting wellness, and healing those who need your services most. Will the candidates for Bachelor of Science, the Master of Science, Doctor of Physical Therapy degrees in the School of Health Professions please stand? <laughs> President McGinnis, I have the distinct honor to present you with this year's candidates. <laughs> candidates, please be seated. And now from the School of Professional Development, Associate Vice President for Professional Education and Assistant Provost for Engaged Learning, Patricia Malone. Congratulations, everyone, today. On behalf of the faculty and staff of the School of Professional Development, we congratulate you on this great achievement and wish you much success as you move forward in all of your careers. We need your passion, your enthusiasm, and your commitment. President McKinnis, I have the distinct honor to present to you this year's candidates Will the candidates for the Master of Arts in Liberal Studies, the Master of Arts in Teaching, the Master of Science in Human Resource Management, the Master of Arts in Higher Education Administration, Postmaster's Certificates in Educational Leadership and School Business District Leadership, and Advanced Graduate Certificates from the School of Professional Development, please stand. President McKinnis, I present to you this year's School of Professional Development graduates. Thank you. Next, we welcome Paul Shepson, Dean of the School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences. Congratulations, graduates. I'm delighted to be able to present these students for the conferral of their degrees. We're very proud of their accomplishments and indeed their spirit and determination and commitment to contributing to a healthier environment gives us all great hope for the future of our planet. Will all candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Master of Science, Master of Arts, and Doctor of Philosophy from the School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences, please stand. <laughs> President McInnes, I am proud to present to you the School of Marine and Atmospheric Science candidates. Go SOMAS! Candidates, please be seated. And now we welcome the Dean of the School of Communication and Journalism, Laura Lindenfeld. 
Well done. Congratulations, everyone. Will this year's candidates for the Bachelor of Arts in Journalism and the Bachelor of Science in Mass Communication in the School of Communication and Journalism please rise. We talk in the school about how our work will create a fairer, more just, more rational world. I have seen so many of you use your knowledge and skills to do exactly that. When you leave this stadium, keep telling stories that matter, because they do. It's the only way we as a society will move forward, and you are exactly the right people to create that momentum. President McGinnis, I present to you this year's School of Communication and Journalism candidates. Congratulations, please be seated. And now, the Dean of our College of Business, Manny London. Will this year's candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Business Management, the Master of Science in Accounting, the Master of Business Administration, and the Master of Science in Finance degrees in the College of Business please stand? <laughs> College of Business Class of 2023, you have learned to understand markets, finance, operations and human resources. You have acquired a keen understanding of ethics, globalization, technology management, and sustainable business. You will bring value to and indeed create the workplace of the future. In short, you are ready to lead. President McGinnis, I present to you this year's College of Business candidates. <laughs> And now we welcome our interim dean of the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences, John Longton. Outstanding. Congratulations, all graduates. It is my honor and a privilege to represent the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences unstoppable class of 2023. The builders, designers, inventors, engineers, and the makers of tomorrow. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Engineering, Bachelor of Science, Master of Science, Doctor of Philosophy, and Advanced Graduate Certificates in the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences please rise? Yeah. President McInnes, it is my great pleasure to present to you the College of Engineering and Applied Science candidates. Congratulations. <laughs> candidates, please be seated. And now, please welcome the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, Nicole Sampson. Welcome, College of Arts and Sciences graduates, parents, partners, siblings, and friends. Thank you for joining us today to honor our students and to be a part of this special celebration. Today, I'm proud to present more than 2,550 commencement candidates for May and summer 2023. With the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts, Master of Music, Master of Science, Master of Arts, Advanced Graduate Certificates, Doctor of Musical Arts, and Doctor of Philosophy in the College of Arts and Sciences, please stand. Woo! <laughs> Seeing all of you here today is a reminder of what we can achieve together. Our students epitomize tenacity, embracing change and challenge, and taking advantage of opportunities that will have a positive impact on your future. I applaud each of you for your strength, resilience, and perseverance while achieving excellence. Graduates, the past few years have not been easy, and yet here you are, about to embark on the next chapter of your lives. It may still be unwritten, but today is where it begins, and I look forward to seeing where your journey takes you. 
And so I congratulate you, our amazing sea wolves in Stony Brook Red. President McInnes, I present to you the candidates for degrees in the College of Arts and Sciences. Candidates, please be seated. This concludes our presentation of candidates. We now invite President McInnes and Provost Lejway forward for the conferral of degrees. At this time, I would like to invite all candidates for doctoral, professional, master's, bachelor's degrees, and advanced graduate certificates to rise. President McGinnis, these students have met the graduation requirements set by the Board of Trustees. As the representative of their faculty, I am proud to present them to you and respectfully request that you confer upon them the degrees and certificates which they are qualified. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I confer degrees upon all of you who have completed the respective requirements with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. So now comes the moment in the ceremony you've all been waiting for. As tradition goes, not just yet, but as tradition goes, there is a moment near the end of the ceremony when the graduates are asked to turn their tassels from one side of their cap to the other to signify the earning of the degree. So that moment is coming right up in class of 2023. It's really important to get this right because we all know that it didn't really happen if we don't capture it through the perfect Instagram selfie. So, all together, you are now graduates of Stony Brook University. You may turn your tassels from right to left, toss your caps. Congratulations to everyone.